Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our Kyushu Bonds K preview. Fairly positive it is going to be the Kyushu Basho and not just the November Basho, because I'm pretty sure uh, I've seen somewhere that they are planning on traveling to Fukuoka for the November tournament. So we should have some more sumo outside of Japan. And overall, it looks like the COVID thing, at least in Tokyo, is kind of calming down to its lowest levels in a year. So maybe the state of emergency stuff can start getting lifted. We can start getting more crowds over there as long as everything is safe to do so. But that's just a lot of speculation at this point. Not why you came for this episode. This is this is all about Bonds K talk. That's what people care about, Jake. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to refrain from talking about anything that's not the Bonds K for the rest <laughs> of the episode. Good. And that's the way it should be. <laughs> None of that silly garbage pickup day talk. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, right. today I was uh, I was watching this new show that I found on Netflix uh, called Midnight Mass. Oh, I thought it was going to be Squid Game. I'm like, you and everybody else. No, apparently both of these are like the current hot topic meme shows right now. And uh, okay. I, I can only speak for Midnight Mass and it's awesome. Don't just just go in blind and trust me. It's kind of, it takes a little bit to get going, but it, it it's pretty cool. That uh, what you just said, but except about Squid Game. Uh, okay. I highly recommend. Also, doesn't take a whole lot of time for it to get going. Uh, so, highly and speaking recommend of Squid Netflix Game. shows, <laughs> no, let's talk about the Bonds K. <laughs> I'm surprised you let me go on even that long. I was interested, and okay, <laughs> I really like Squid Game, so I wanted to say something about that. But no spoilers here. Uh, people, people don't come here for the spoilers. They come here to talk about the Yokozuna on the Kyushu Bonds K. <laughs> Bruce uh, Willis was dead. <laughs> Terra no Fuji will be the first new name at the top of the Bonds K since Kakuyu was in the top spot for Kyushu of 2019. <laughs> so ever since then, it has been the Hakuho show. Oh. Eh? Yeah. Get it? Because like his, his name is Hakuho show and it's the Hakuho show, S-H-O-W. It goes with his name, S-H-O. It, it just works perfectly like that. I... At first, I'm I a was dad groaning. now, so at first I was groaning, but now that you've explained the joke in its entirety, <laughs> now it's funny. Now that I'm a father, it just comes naturally. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think a little bit of surprise to a lot of people Hakuho will indeed be on the Kyushu Bonds K as his retirement was announced prior to the creation of the Bonds K, but it was not officially recognized until after the creation of the Bonds K. So he will indeed be on the Kyushu Bonds K. Uh, we will jump down to Ozeki, where not a whole lot of action. It was Shodai followed by Takakesho last time. It'll be Shodai followed by Take- Takakesho this time. No Katoban drama, none of that. So uh, it should hold steady at Ozeki for at least two more Basho. Uh, Sekiwake, pretty much the same story as Ozeki. Uh, Mitaki Yumi was in front of Meisei before. They're going to stay just like that. The only difference is we are not going to have a third absent Sekiwake this Basho with Asanoyama dropping down to the Maigashira ranks. And then at Komosubi, Ichinojo is going to slide over, take the East Komosubi slot. We're not going to have another situation like we did with Meisei having an 8-7 and seven record at Komosubi and rising up to the Sekiwake ranks, even though those two Sekiwake ranks were already claimed by Mitaki Yumi and Asanoyama, because it was just a uh, special situation with Asanoyama. No, I'm assuming, I'm assuming it was a special situation since Asanoyama was, yeah. we knew ahead of time he wasn't going to be participating that I'm assuming that had to be a special exception. I don't, I don't think that's going to be the norm going forward. If Ichi Nojo uh, yeah, is somehow a Sekiwake, like... then they've <laughs> changed the norm, but I do not see that happening. That'd be really weird. It seems like this one is going to be pretty straightforward. Maybe last time they just wanted to make sure they had two Sekiwake that were actually doing something. Yeah, the but placement this time around, there's no reason to have any extra in either of those ranks, right? 
yeah, the placement of Ichi Nojo will tell us if it was a special exception for Asanoyama or if it's a new standard and it's 99.9%, it was a special exception for Asanoyama. We've already spent more time than that really uh, deserves because it's more not- time than Asanoyama spent wrestling. Hey, got him. All right. Let's talk about the West Como Subi slot because that is our first difficult uh, choice we need to make for this Bonds K. So it's really a coin toss between Kiribayama and Daisho. So based on each of their previous rank and record, they have an equal claim to this rank. Kiribayama was nine and six from Maegashira two, and Daisho was ten and five from Maegashira four. Uh, both of them fought a fairly even schedule as far as it comes to the Sanyaku. Uh, Kiribayama had seven Sanyaku matches and Daisho had six. Uh, so it will come down to will the Bonsuke committee reward the higher-ranked Rikshi in Maegashira 2 Kiribayama or the one with the better record with 10 and 5 Daisho? I, I kind of lean Daisho here. What are your thoughts, Jake? I was just going to bring up what do you think the special prize and the win over Terra no Fuji mean anything? I Because uh, those are both pretty cool. Yeah, I think maybe the win over Terano Fuji might give him an edge. I'm also wondering, I don't know if they take into consideration like the quality of your sumo. And Kiribayama definitely had a lot of quality sumo this Basho, but he also did have back-to-back wins via semi-hankas. And so maybe they hold that against him. But I, I do I do give the edge to Daisho here because he had the better record. And I think we've seen in the past, and I'm actually going to dive pretty deep into that in a few ranks, that better <laughs> I record. I bet you are. <laughs> better record trumps uh-huh. uh, previous rank, may, at least further down the Bonsuke. Maybe that doesn't hold up here in the joy. Uh, but he did have that win over Terra no Fuji. And I also wonder, sometimes I think they give uh, precedent to people who have been there before been there done that daisho has been komosubi and sekiwake in the past kiribayama has not uh and so i do think they they tend to give a slight benefit of the doubt if you've already been there before uh so for for those reasons i i give the edge to daisho here but it's really 50 50 coin toss i think between those two so we jump down into our zone of death, which will extend down to Maegashira 4 West for this Basho. That'll comprise of Maegashira's 1 through 4. The people have got to go up against all the Sanyaku Rikshi. Uh, so obviously, if it was a coin toss between Daisho and Kiribayama, and I gave Daisho the edge for Komosubi, Kiribayama is going to be your top Maegashira for this Basho at Maegashira 1 East. And then I've got Waka Takakage easily taking the other Maegashira one rank for this Basho. Uh, Takayasu is the only Rikshi dropping from the Sanyaku ranks this Basho that we need to look out for somebody dropping to take one of these spots. But with only four wins, he's going to fall farther than Maegashira one. And the other Rikshi with double digit wins are just too far down the Bonske to really challenge for this spot. Um, and most of the Maegashira ranks for this Basho are going to be fairly straightforward, especially when we get to the bottom of my Bonds K prediction. Everything's just going to kind of line up perfectly into the, into place. Um, there is an exception with the area in the middle that has me very concerned. Uh, but besides that spot, there aren't really too many head scratchers or tie-breaking scenarios that we need to think about for this Bonds K, which kind of makes me nervous that I'm missing something. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes, I think, November 1st when the Bonds K is released. Uh, but yeah, Kiribayama, Wakataka Kage, pretty easily lined up for Magashir 1. Same for Magashir 2. Oh, no show. Uh, Renly, stop moving my microphone, you dick. Um, <laughs> sorry, my, my cat is on my lap and he wants to make his presence known. Uh, the, the snuggliest cat literally yeah. ever. <laughs> yep. Uh, Magashir 2 on the east side. Oh, no show. He's just clearly the next guy that should be ranked at this level. And then Takanosho uh, just dropping down one rank from Maegashira 1 after a 7-8 and eight record. Once again, no real competition from anybody down below to kind of challenge him for that spot too much. Uh, so here we're going to get to Maegashira 3 where I did a unnecessary amount of research uh, to figure out which one of these guys <laughs> deserved to be in front of the other. And I did the work, so now you have to hear about it, as painful as it's going to be. Well, that is that is my contribution to the podcast, yes. Yeah. 
So Mio Giryu and Oki no Umi are the two guys that will be my Gashira three. Uh, but we need to determine which one will be on the east side, which one will be on the west side. Jake, you can stop it with those sarcastic <laughs> <laughs> nods and whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Should I should I like verbally like, oh, yes, yeah, very interesting. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Just shut up and let me talk for 10 minutes. Mm, 2011. <laughs> OK, make it make it like nine minutes and you got a deal. We'll see. So <laughs> Mio Gidyu, uh had an 11-4 record from Maegashira 10, and Oki no Umi had a 10-5 record from Maegashira 8. And so it, it's a similar situation to Kiribayama and Daesho, where the guy ranked two spots below the other Rikshi in contention for the spot had one more win, which basically, if you're doing the math of wins minus losses equals ranks jumped up the bonds K, it gets you in a virtual tie for those spots. But the difference between Kiribayama and Daisho versus Miyogiryu and Okinoumi is that Okinoumi was on the east side of the Bonsuke while Miyogiryu was on the west side, which should give Okinoumi the slight rank advantage over Miyogiryu. I've kind of played around with that a little bit in the past, but I've never really dove too deep into it. But for some reason, this conundrum is uh, what really drove me into doing some research to figure out how that really holds steady and how how much the side of the bonds you're on determines if you're going to jump over that person that you're kind of in a virtual tie with so all of my research that i did is going to be from recent bonds 2011 or later so the past 10 years uh so probably not a whole lot of changes in bonds creation theory uh has happened since then uh, so I, I searched on Sumo DB for instances of a Maegashira 10 Rikshi getting 11 wins and a Maegashira 8 Rikshi getting 10 wins. That's only happened once in the past 10 years besides this. They were both on the west side of the Bonske. And in the case where they were both on the same side of the Bonske, the Rikshi that was ranked lower but had one more win did jump over the guy that was ranked higher with fewer wins, which is another reason why I have Daisho over Kiribayama here lower lower ranked guy with more wins jumped over the higher ranked guy with less wins in that virtual tie. So I kind of searched for a similar situation. So instead of looking at Maegashira uh, 10 versus Maegashira 8, I dropped it down Maegashira 11 versus Maegashira 9. Uh, or no, sorry, Maegashira 10 Rikshi getting 10 wins and a Maegashira 8 Rikshi getting 9 wins. So not... Uh, the same amount of wins, but the same difference in rank and the same difference in record between the two Rikshi. So in the past 10 years, that's happened twice. There were once again, both cases where the Rikshi were on the west side of the Bonske. But once again, in both of those cases, the Rikshi that was ranked lower but had more wins did jump over the Rikshi that was ranked higher with fewer wins. And so then I searched for a Maegashira 10 Rikshi getting nine wins and a Maegashira 8 Rikshi getting eight wins. And so that has happened seven times in the past. Once again, we're dealing with a situation where a Rikshi two ranks behind another Rikshi had one more win. We're going to see if which side they're on determines if they are ahead of them on the next Bonds K. So of those seven instances where we had a Maegashira 10 Rikshi with nine wins and a Maegashira 8 Rikshi getting eight wins, uh, there were three times where the Maegashira 10 Rikshi was on the east side and the Maegashira 8 Rikshi was on the west side. So the lower rank guy was on the east side, higher rank guy on the west side. Uh, so you would kind of expect the lower guy to jump ahead of them every time. And that's exactly what happened. Each time Maegashira 10 jumped over Maegashira 8. One time where the lower guy was on the same side as the 8 guy. And as we've seen before in the other case studies, the guy that was ranked lower jumped ahead of the guy that was ranked higher. Um, so in all of the cases that we've seen, the tiebreaker has gone to the Rikshi that has had more wins. But of those seven instances, there were three times where the lower ranked Rikshi was on the west side and the higher ranked Rikshi was on the east side, which is our current situation. And all three of those times, the higher ranked Rikshi remained ahead of the lower ranked Rikshi. So that's not a lot of numbers, but when it's 100% of the time, I feel like that's pretty good. I did do one more similar situation. I checked for a Maegashira 11 Rikshi with 11 wins and a Maegashira 9 Rikshi with 10 wins. Found an exact perfect match where we had a Maegashira 11 Rikshi on the west side, Maegashira 9 Rikshi on the east side. And in that case, once again, the higher ranked Rikshi with lower wins stayed ahead of the lower ranked Rikshi with more wins. 
So in conclusion, this is the part where you can start paying oh, attention again. Yeah. No, I, I recognize that word. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I really need to pay a lot more attention to which side of Richie was previously on when I am determining the tiebreakers and who's going to jump over who. So because of all of that, uh, Oki no Umi, I have him going on the east side as the higher ranked Rikshi with fewer wins, but he was on the east side versus the lower ranked Rikshi with more wins who was on the west side. Very long winded and boring conversation to get to Oki no Umi east, Miyugiryu west for this Bonsuke. Let's move on. Please. <laughs> My Gashira 4 on the east side, I have Endo. And on the west side, I have Takanafuji. Uh, hey, it's another situation. They both deserve to be the same rank. Endo was ranked lower, had more wins. But uh, which side was he on, Ryan? <laughs> Endo was on the east side, while Takanafuji was on the west side. Uh, so I, ha I easily have Endo taking the east slot, while Takanafuji takes the west slot. I've already done that research. Don't need to do it again. <laughs> Could you go over it one more time? I missed some, miss some of the points. So when you have a Rikshi that has one more win, but is two ranks below. No. All right. So that <laughs> those will be God. your Rikshi that we are expecting to face uh, a full Sanyaku schedule. But we are actually missing Hakuho. So that it's actually going to definitely extend down to Maegashira 5 East, where in that spot I have Hoshoryu. Uh, so Hoshoryu and Shimano Umi. Once again, they're tied for who should be ranked here. Uh, this time, uh, they're both on the east side. So you're thinking, oh, Shimanoumi had more wins. Go Shimanoumi here. Eh, joy bias here. Hoshoryu takes the spot ahead of Shimanoumi. Uh, and then on the west side, I'm actually not going with Shimanoumi there either because we, we have the issue of the dropping Takayasu and where he needs to go. I have made uh, mistakes in many past Bonskes in dropping Komosubis too far down the Bonske after they have a poor record. It just it isn't obvious to me about who <laughs> who they should be ranked ahead of that they normally wouldn't be if they were just like a Maegashir 1 last Basho as, a, as opposed to Komosubi, but we've definitely seen a pattern of if you're dropping from Sanyaki ranks, you're just not going to drop as far as you would if you were a Maegashira. Uh, it's similar to Joy Bias, but on steroids. Uh, so, <laughs> like uh, last last Basho, by the math, Wakataka Kage deserved to be three ranks below Kota Nawaka and two ranks below Tamawashi, but he ended up ahead of both of them. Uh, so my new working theory is that dropping Rikshi from Sanyaku are given preferential treatment over Rikshi, just all Rikshi that were basically outside of the joy to a certain point. Like if you have a one in four Komosubi, one in 14 Komosubi, they're, they're still going to take a precipitous plummet down the Bonds K. Um, so I, I don't think you can have a four and 11 Takayasu ranked at like Magashir two or Magashir three ahead of Miyogiryu and Oki no Umi on this Bonds K. But you um, could have him at five, you're saying. I think I think it makes sense to have him at five. Hell, maybe he even takes like Takara Fuji's spot at Maegashira 4 West or something, something like that. Um, but I, I really don't think they're gonna be super nice to him. He only had four wins. There's plenty of deserving people that need deserve the uh ranks ahead of him, and two of his wins were by Fusen. Uh, so I oh, don't damn, know. I if... forgot about that. That's so much, <laughs> I, so much I, worse. <laughs> yeah. You see, ooh, four and eleven record. That's not too good. Two of the wins were by Fusen. Ooh. He was two and seven in the ring. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't know if I if I should be even meaner to him. I. I <laughs> we don't know how they treat Fusen. I kind of think they ignore it because we have seen Daisho get eleven wins at Komosubi and force open a third Sekiwake slot with eleven wins when two of his wins came by Fusen. So I kind of think they don't take it too much into determination. They kind on, of count them as basically wins anyways. Yeah, you, you got to win. Um, but Play so nine just, games. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, half of the time, that's 90% of the half of the battle or however that Yogi Berra quote goes. 60% of the time, it works every time. Uh, it's something like 90% of the game is half mental or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a Yogi Berra, whatever. Oh, he's got plenty. Yes, then they're all gold. But yeah, all, all that is a long-winded way of saying, despite what the math is saying, I'm going to have Takayasu at Magashir 5 West ahead of Shimano Umi because he was in the Sanyaku ranks in the previous Basho. 
So we go down to Maegashira 6 on the east side. That is where I have Shima no Umi landing at Maegashira 6 East. It will just be a uh, one-rank uh, promotion for him. He was Maegashira 7 last time with an 8-7 record. Uh, and then now we get to Maegashira 6 West, and we're at a part of the Bonds game where we're starting to run out of candidates to move up in the rankings. Uh, we only have four winning records left to place. Uh, three eight and seven records from Maegashira 11, 14, and 16, and one nine and six record from Maegashira 17. So we're going to be focusing mostly on Rikshi that we need to move down the Bonske at this point because none of those guys that have a winning record really deserve to be coming up here uh, right now. And so the Rikshi that makes the most sense to drop into this spot is Tamawashi after a six and nine record from Maegashira 4. I think the other Rikshi that we're still looking out for dropping down the Bonske from this point are going to be uh, Asanoyama, obviously, 0-15 from Sekiwake, Hokuto Fuji, 2-13 from Maegashira 2, and Koto Nawaka, 3-12 from Maegashira 3. Uh, so I'll, obviously all of those guys need to keep dropping down the Bonske. For those of you who are yelling at your phone that I got that quote wrong, I figured it out. <laughs> Uh, the quote is baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. That sounds I very hope that much was worth like the wait Yogi for Berra. you as much as it was for me. <laughs> as long as we're accurate, it can be the worst. We're doing the bonds. K prediction. We're not worried about accuracy today. Oh, shut up. That's <laughs> exclusively what I'm worried about. <laughs> why do you think I went on a five minute diatribe to explain why Mio Giryu should be ranked below Okino Umi on this previous on this yeah. upcoming bonds game. Spoiler alert for the end of the episode. That's the pick that I'm going to guess you get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be something like, well, Mio Gideon did beat two Ozeki, so we should give him a little bit of preferential treatment. It, it's going to happen. And Sounds all like of, you're convincing yourself right now. I mean, I am, but I already submitted my prediction on guess the bonds case. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to change <laughs> from that. Okay, fair enough. So uh, Tamawashi, I've got Micah Shear six West dropping two ranks. Uh, from Maegashira 4 after a 6-9 and nine record. Get to Maegashira 7. Uh, Ura is the next easy guy to place here, dropping one rank from Maegashira 6. Uh, we could have him dropping a half rank from Maegashira 6 East to Maegashira 6 West and dropping down Tamawashi to Maegashira 7 East. Uh, that wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility, but Tamawashi was in the joy last time, so I will give him uh, preferential treatment over Ura here. Uh, so now things get even a little bit more tricky. Uh, Magashira seven West, the next. So if you do, if you look at the math, the next person on the list that deserves to be ranked is Toby Zaru, who deserves to be ranked Magashira nine. And we're trying to fill a Magashira seven spot, but we can't, uh, pull up Toby Zaru because he had a losing record for Magashira eight. So he can't be Magashira seven. So then we have to pull from a group of Rikshi that deserve to be Maegashira 10. Two of those guys were Maegashira 9 Rikishi with losing records, so they're also eliminated. So that leaves us with having to drop Chiyo Shoma, only two ranks for Maegashira 5 with a 5-10 and 10 record, or like pulling up Kodo Waco, four ranks for Maegashira 11 with an 8-7 and 7 record. I don't like that either. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with Chiyo Shoma. Uh, he did have to face some members of the Sanyaku, not a whole lot, but some. Uh, plus, he had two sick hankas that the JSA is sure to respect and reward <laughs> uh, by giving him a softer demotion down the Bonske. Totally rad hankas. Yeah. Uh, but also mostly because of doing some more research. Uh, so I looked up previous instances of a 5 and 10 Maegashira 5 Rikshi versus an 8 and 7 Maegashira 11 Rikshi over the, once again, the past 10 years. And it seems to be that the Maegashira 5 Rikshi typically, typically gets the preferential treatment here. Uh, and there was even an exact scenario from 2017 when a Maegashira 5 East Rikshi, which is what Chiyo Shoma was, uh, dropped down to Maegashira 7, and a Maegashira 11 West, which Kota Waco is, rose up to Maegashira 8. So I feel pretty good with just that two-rank demotion for Chiyo Shoma here. Uh, praise be unto the Hanka King. I, I had a point, but then you threw me off by <laughs> saying the words that are on my family crest right there at the end. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, Asano Yama. I, I mean, it, it feels to me like he should be coming up here somewhere, but I'm sure you did some research on how far he should be falling, right? 
No, I just kind of winged it for that one. I figured, eh. I've done I did research, research on every single other thing. I, you yeah. know, Meg, Magashira 11 with whatever wins, or I forgot the thing already, but like, yeah. but that one. Yeah. Just now. Just... Th- throw him down at Magashira 16, we'll call it a day. But he he's not quite in the conversation for filling a spot that you have open. I, I don't think so. Not yet. Not yeah. not based on on my uh, non research that I didn't do on uh, following Sekiwake's. Okay. <laughs> my Kashira eight on the east side. Uh, since I was debating Chiyoshoma versus Kota Waco, obviously the next spot will go to Kota Waco. I got him a three rank jump from my Kashira eleven with an eight and seven record. And on the west side, uh, we're now at another tricky spot. Uh, Toby Zaru is the next Rikshi that needs to be ranked, but he was ranked Magashira 8 West last time, and this is where I'd be putting again this time. Uh, the next Rikshi with a winning record that we want to promote is Yutakeyama, who only deserves to be Magashira 13, and so that would be a six-rank promotion for Yutakeyama after just an 8-7 and seven record. Or if we wanted to go nuts, uh, we could pull Abi up, who deserves to be Magashira 11 uh, from Jurio, but we know how well the Bonske committee treats Jurio Rikshi. So that that's not going to happen. Uh, so now we have to consider our remaining Rikshi falling down the Bonske. Uh, those three that I mentioned before, the triumvirate of Asanoyama, Hokuto Fuji, and Koto Nawaka. None of them deserve to be ranked by the math until we get to Magashira 12. So I think we're in a situation here where it's just best to kind of keep the seven and eight Rikshi in their spot to kind of fill that gap. Uh, so we're not over promoting or under demoting some people. So we're going to leave Toby Zaru here at Magashira eight West. Then at Magashira nine, that's, that's what we're going to do again. We've got a pair of Rixie that are seven and eight. Yutakeyama still doesn't deserve to be here. The triumvirate still don't deserve to be kind of under demoted here, but I, we've seen in the past like a three and twelve Magashira three Rikshi kind of end up in like the Magashira eight nine range, and so I, I could. There was a big part of me that wanted to kind of okay, we'll leave Tobizaru and Awayama, but then let's drop Hidenumi a half rank slot in Koto Nowaki here. Uh, but I don't know. That started feeling like I was just getting too arbitrary with where I was going to place. Koto Nowaka. So I, I, I'm just going to leave the seven and eight Rikshi where they are and keep dropping the uh, poor performing uh, Sanyaku and Joy Rikshi. And then that brings us to the bottom of the Bonske portion at Magashira 10 on the east side. Chiyo Taidu. It, it's four straight Rikshi that had a seven and eight record. And I'm just going to leave all four of them in their spot. So at Magashira <laughs> okay. 10 east, I've got Chiyo Taidu. Uh, so that sounds next, like very lazy, but also I think it makes perfect sense. <laughs> it, it makes sense because what's nice here is we, from my 10 West up to my 12 East, where spoiler alert, I've got Ishiura staying where he was, he was absent due to COVID. So I, I think he's going to anchor that my 12 East spot. We've got three spots to fill, um, We've got three Rikshi that are tumbling precipitously down the Bonske. Uh, that's the second time I've used that word. So, uh, you know, use some big words on now. this episode. Yeah, probably. Um, and then you also have Yutakeyama, who we don't want to send precipitously up the Bonske. I'm just going to work it into every sentence, whether it works or not. Oh, um, this is so much worse. <laughs> uh, so... It actually kind of works out perfectly, leaving those four guys in their spot. Now we have three spots that we need to fill. We've got three guys that are dropping down the Bonske. So at Magashir 10 West, this is where I have Koto Nawaka going. He definitely deserves to be ranked ho- higher than Hokuto Fuji, who had one less win than him from a rank above him. But if you have one more win than somebody who was ranked one higher than you, you deserve to be higher than them on the next Bonske. And after doing some research, there is uh, actually historical. <laughs> Can we precedent. just get like a button for you to hit where it's like, click after research. doing several Bashos of research. Yeah. Uh, there, there have been a few instances of the, in the past where we had an 0 and 15 Sekiwake at the same time as we had a three and 12 Magashira three. And every single time the three and 12 Magashira three was ranked ahead of the 0 and 15 Sekiwake. So we've got Koto Nawaka taking the first place of these uh, tumbling uh, three guys. Magashira 11, 
fairly arbitrarily, I'm putting Asanoyama at Maegashira 11 East. Uh, and then at Maegashira 11 West, I've got Hokuto Fuji going in here. Do I necessarily think that that group of four, seven, and eight Rikshi will stay together and none of them will drop? And the three uh, dropping Rikshi will all stay together in a nice, perfect spot? Not really, but I, I, it seemed too arbitrary for me to try to like weave them in between the seven and eight Rikshi to try to get those guys to like drop at least like a half a rank or something like that. Uh, so I'm just leaving them in their blocks and it should get me close enough. I think. Yeah. It seems like one of those things where there's you, you probably have it right for each individual guy, but probably seven times inevitably, you know, there'll probably be one that's wrong. Yeah. But yeah, I know what you mean. Logically it all makes sense to me at least. Mm -hmm. So then we get to Micah Shear 12, where, like I said, on the east side, we're going to have Ishiura holding rank after he was absent for COVID. And on the west side, I've got Tedetsu Yoshi dropping here. Uh, kind of, I just want to put a note out there that if they want to be spiteful towards the suspended Asanoyama, they could move Tedetsu Yoshi to Micah Shear 11. That would still be a four rank drop for a five and 10 Tedetsu Yoshi. Perfectly well in line and justified. And then drop Asanoyama even further down to my at 12 so i could see them being spiteful towards him uh but that would be the biggest drop for an o and 15 sekiwake in history as the biggest drop previously was miyugiyu in 2014 dropping down to my 11 east which is where i have asanoyama ending up on my bonds k uh there were even a couple situations in the early 2000s where an o and 15 sekiwake dropped to like my six huh. yeah um Okay, well, I had a point, but now I'm looking at how you misspelled Asanoyama in that paragraph. Asano Ayama. Okay, I guess it's only one letter difference, but it, it looks, it, it broke my brain for a moment. Here, um, how's that? I'll let that one slide now that it's spelled correctly. <laughs> um, I, I was curious, though, Ishiura, um, he's going to be staying, yeah, well, I mean, we've seen COVID uh, absences before, and generally they stay right at the same rank. Mm -hmm. This is this one, uh, I, I'm not positive if we've seen this situation before, but because we're losing, uh, instead of um, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, instead of nine guys in the Sanyaku, we're going to have eight guys in the Sanyaku. Technically, isn't Ishiura getting a promotion? So would Tobizaru, Aoyama, Hide, and did, Umi, and Chiyo tied you. Did that situation arise, and I'm just forgetting about we, it? We, we've, we've talked about that before, and we, on a previous Bosque uh, episode where I hit the button. I did the research. Um, <laughs> we we found there was a case where there's like a seven and eight Rikshi who held his rank and like went up three spots in like the order of things. So it has okay. happened historically where yes, technically there's one more guy behind them in the rankings than there was previously, but they they seem to care a lot more about the number that your rank is at than the actual how many people are you in front of and technical promotions for uh losing rickshi yeah. so i'm i'm not overly worried about it it crossed my mind and i'm a little worried about it but i'm not overly worried about it okay fair enough and i i think what we saw for the covid ab absences back i don't remember if it was like haru hatsu it was around then but Everybody that missed due to COVID in the top division, they kept their same exact rank on the next Basho because there was nobody, there wasn't like a buildup of Rikshi that needed to be ranked Makashira 12. But damn it, Ishiura has to be there because of COVID. We didn't have that. We had that in Jurio where there's just so many people that needed to be at the top of the Jurio ranks, but we had so many absent Jurio Rikshi due to COVID. And so they did move some of those guys down up to just one full rank, but that was just to make room for Rikshi being demoted down from Makuuchi, Rikshi being pulled up from the bottom of Jurio. Uh, but we're not in that situation with Ishiura here where he's really uh, contending with a bunch of other people that need his spot. It's really him and Tedetsu Yoshi, and so they can both fill out the Micah Shira 12 spots, and we'll be just fine with that. And added tiebreaker for Tedetsu Yoshi and Ishiura. Ishiura's on the east side. Tedetsu Yoshi was on the west side. Boom. Keep it the same. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, fair enough. All right. Micah Shira 13. Um, so providing that everyone that I think gets placed above Micah Shira 13 does 
get placed above my Gashira 13, the last five ranks are extremely easy and straightforward for me. <laughs> so as long as long as they're not being super spiteful to Asanoyama and just tumble him down to my Gashira 13, 14, which I don't think they will do. Um, Cause I, I kind of looked at the Abi situation and how he did and how his drop down the rankings after he was suspended uh, for that first Basho, I think he had like three wins to start the Basho, and then he dropped down the rankings. It wasn't like exorbitant for his, his drop. It, it it wasn't super precipitous. <laughs> Precipitously it was... and ambiguously. Those, yeah. those are also going on the uh, Bonds K prediction drinking game. <laughs> it, it, it was kind of in line for what you would expect for his rank and record. I think it was a three and 12 Micah Shearer five dropping down to Micah Shearer 14. All right, that's fine. So I don't, I, they weren't super spiteful to him. And if they weren't super spiteful to him, I don't think they're going to be overly spiteful to Asanoyama. So I, I think we should be safe there. So everything else hopefully stays super easy. And they, they just go with what I've got because it, it just made, I made their job easier uh, by doing this. So Micah Shearer 13 on the East side. Uh, I've got Yutakeyama going here um, and Tochi Noshin on the west side. Why it's super easy by their rank and record. Both of them deserve to be my Gashira 13. They're the only two Rikshi that deserve to be my Gashira 13. Uh, right. Both were previously on the west side of the Bonske. So we give preferential treatment to the person, the Rikshi with the better record, which is Yutakeyama. So have him on the east side, Tochi Noshin on the west side. Go to my Gashira 14. Once again, we have two Rikshi that, by their rank and record, deserve to be Maegashira 14. There are no other Rikshi that are contending for this rank. Chiyo no Kuni, Kageyaki. Both were previously on the east side of the Bonske, so we give preferential treatment to the Rikshi with a winning record. So Chiyo no Kuni, Maegashira 14 east, Kageyaki, Maegashira 14 west. What about Kageyaki's Bonske rabbit's foot? I did think about that, but... <laughs> I, I'm going to hope that my new research uh, trumps Kageyaki's Bonske luck. Uh, probably won't because it's freaking Kageyaki. No matter, no matter the fact that he has six straight losing tournaments and somehow hasn't fallen out of the top division, they're, they're <laughs> doing everything they can to slow his drop down to Jurya, which is inevitable at this point. Uh, <laughs> actually, no. It, my gosh, here at 14, he'll probably... I'm not going to say he'll, he'll go like get 10 another and five. 7 and 8 and <laughs> hold his spot or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'll get a 7 and 8 and then he'll hold his spot. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, I I considered it, but once again, I didn't act on that because that's <laughs> that's too arbitrary, and I'm not a fan of arbitrary. That's uh, why I yeah, did yeah, like yeah, a half right. hour of research on Miyagiri versus Okinomi East and West and trying to get rid of all the arbitrariness out of this. They, there's sound logic and reasoning for – Everything that they do up to a point until the point where they're like, ah, screw it. Let's do something <laughs> stupid, which they do at least once per bonds game, mm -hmm. which is why Asanoyama is probably going to be like Micah Shear 16. <laughs> All right. Micah Shear 15. Um, so we have one more remaining non Jiria Rikshi that deserves to be ranked uh, at Micah Shear 15, and that is Chiyomaru. So I have Chiyomaru going Micah Shear 15 East. And he was our last Rikshi in the Makuuchi division with a winning record to be placed. So now Ding, I feel achievement unlocked, right? Yep. Now I feel comfortable placing Rikshi from Jurio on the Bonske. And so the top ranked Rikshi that'll be coming from Jurio should be Abi, who was 13 and two from Jurio five. So I have him at my of 15 West. So I know last time Yutakiyama came from Jurio and was ranked above a Makauchi Rikshi that had a winning record, but I really think it's because Yutakiyama was at the tippy top of Jurio and Ichi Yamamoto was at the very bottom of Makauchi. So since they were right next to each other in rank and Yutakiyama had two more wins than him, they gave Yutakiyama a slight advantage over Ichi Yamamoto, placed him above uh, Ichi Yamamoto there, uh, but we really don't have that scenario this time. Abi's buried down at Jurio 5, and I think jumping up to Magashira 15, that's like a 8-rank jump for a 13-2 record. That's 
that's perfectly fine. I think coming from Jurio up to Magashira. And so I, I feel pretty safe in assuming that all Jurio promotees on this Bonsuke will be behind uh, Maku Uchi Rikshi that had a winning record in the previous boss show. Um, I did do more research, hit the button um, for a 13 and two Jurio five Rikshi. And the last one I found was uh, Shodai actually had 13 and two record his last boss show in Jurio before he made his Maku Uchi debut. Uh, and he ended up at my 12 uh, from that spot, but he was still behind every Maku Uchi Rikshi that had a winning record. I think they just had more like 10 and fives and stuff like that, or everybody from like my 14 down had piss poor records. Also the ranks didn't go down to my 17 back then. It was like my 16 or 15 because of the bloated state of the Sanyaku ranks at that time. So it's fairly in line with what they did with Shodai. So once again, feel comfortable leaving Abi uh, at Magashira 15 West and not bumping him up to like Magashira 11, which is where the math would want him to be. Fair so Magashira 16, I've got uh, Sada Naomi, uh up from Jurio going on the east side, and I've got Aqua going on the west side. Uh, both deserve to be. Uh, the same rank by the math, and both were on the west side of the Bonske. So Sada Naomi with more wins gets the edge. And then Maiga Shira 17 on the east side, I've got Kaisei here. And on the west side, I have Shohozan. So by the math, Shohozan would deserve to be ahead of Kaisei. Uh, but we know that the Bonske committee likes to shit on Jurio Rikshi fairly unnecessarily. So I know I said I want to get rid of any arbitrary stuff, but arbitrarily I'm putting Kaisei ahead of Shohoves on, despite the math saying I should do otherwise. That's pretty cool, though. Uh, we haven't seen Shohoves on in a little while. Yeah, it, it's been a bit, and he'll be 37, I think. Uh, so yeah, probably, last time I think we saw him was guy. yeah, last time we saw him was Aki of last year. Oh wow, it's been over and a year. And he will be yes, he'll be 37 uh, and like 10 months. Okay, so if he he could be he could very easy by the yeah. time Hatsu rolls around. It, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I take it back. He'll be he'll be 38 by March. Okay. Um, but still, yeah, that's definitely the the oldest guy in the top division. I think Tamawashi's probably Tamawashi's the other like one. 36, I think. Yeah. But that's that's pretty cool though. Like he's still kicking butt down in Jurio enough to get back to the big show and. Yep. That'd be cool. He had a one last 10 and here. five record from Jurio four, so good showing from Shohozan. Uh, so Shohozan will be the final member of the Makuuchi division, which now extends one slot further down to Magashira 17 West with the Sanyaku ranks dropping by one. Uh, I think we are very much looking at a Magashira 18 East ranking for the Hatsu Basho, unless Mitaki Yumi gets like a 15 and Ozen show and they're like, yep, Ozeki. Move them up because Hakuho will disappear off the Bonske. We'll only have seven Sanyaku Rikshi. So uh, Maigashira 18 East, the very, very rare Maigashira 18 rank will be showing its face for the first time in a couple of years because we had it once when, when, they, when they had one Ozeki. Yeah, Takakesho was our solo Ozeki, and then they gave Asanoyama uh, kind of a little light promotion up to Ozeki. He, he probably could have done a little bit more to earn that. He didn't quite reach the 33 wins over three Basho, but they're like, oh, we only have one Ozeki Yasunoyama, please. <laughs> Save us. Yeah. All right. So we have four Rikshi that are going to be dropping from Makuuchi down to Jurio. Uh, and it, it was all very clear cut promotions and demotions for this Basho. There's not a situation where it's like, is it going to be Chiyo no Kuni? Is it going to be Mitoryu? feel awful for me toward you who got hurt this Basho. So he was, he was the top guy in Jurio and only got two wins before having to pull out. So he's going to drop pretty far down Jurio and have to fight his way back up to the top there again. Uh, he, he's just Jake, look up how long me you has been in Jurio consecutively. I have also, to scroll. Yeah. I'm also very <laughs> 2017 curious. was the last time he was not in Jurio. <laughs> yeah. And that was on his way up. He's, this was his highest rank ever, yep. and it had been like two years since he'd even been like Jurio 4 or higher. How do you manage to like be so consistently right. in that, that tiny window oh. to get stuck in that division? 
Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm very curious about what the longest stretch of time somebody has been consecutively <laughs> yeah. in Jurio. I'm sure there's somebody who was in, in it for like 20 years because there's always like sumo history is long enough. There's always something, right? Yeah. But but yeah, that this has got to be up there because he, he got to Jurio uh, in January of 2018. Uh, so he has spent about, well, because he'll be in Jurio next Basho too. So that yep. I think will make it the full four year stretch straight. So Jurio. 23 Basho because we missed one uh, last year. Yep. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And he was a, was he a Makushita Tsukedashi or was he a Sandanme Tsukedashi? Makushita. Okay. So he yeah, might he be our university last... on fire. Yeah. Yeah. He might be our last makushita tsukidashi that we've had i think i did some research because we're going to have another one coming up this tournament we're going to have another makushita tsukidashi with a rikshi debuting at makushita 15 so if he goes seven and oh boom straight up to jurio after one basho nice um so i did some research just to see when the last time we had one of those was and i think it was two people me toward you and somebody else uh it might have been yago uh, back in 2017 Ooh, that sounds right i thought because he came in he came in with a lot of hype yeah. Yes. Uh, Yago in 2017. Okay. Jesus, what the hell, man? How do you? Oh, uh, you said you did. You you did I some did, reading on it. Okay. Good. I hit my button and I did research. That would uh, that would have been that would have been the point where I just stopped believing you that you actually have all this <laughs> stuff memorized. <laughs> oh God, no. I I'm not gonna. Two to three years from now. Well, two to three months from now, I'm not gonna remember about this one guy debuting at Makushita Tsukidashi this basho. Yeah. It's just. It's important now, so I remember it. But also now we're talking about it a lot, so I'm probably going to remember Now that we've it. talked about yeah, now that we've made it a thing. Yeah. Uh, but like I was saying, the demotions, very clear cut. Uh, Ichi Yamamoto, Chiyo No-O, and Toku Shoryu all had 4-11 and 11 records from Magashira 15 or below. And then Tsudu Gisho, he had a match on day 15 against Sho Hozan that I'm fairly positive was set up as a winner gets Maku Uchi next Basho. Uh, and so Sudugisho lost that match, giving him a 5-10 and 10 record from Maigashira 13, which is why I have him demoted and Shohozan promoted. Uh, so I think, like I said, a lot of this ba Bonske, with the exception of like Maigashira 8 West to Maigashira 11 West, is feels fairly straightforward without a whole lot of controversy. We really only have a couple spots where like two guys are vying for a spot and it's really just an East and West issue. There's nothing like, Oh fuck. We've got five guys that need to be ranked my guess year 12. What am I going to do with all of them? There isn't like a spot like that on this bonds case. So I feel like I should be fairly close. Uh, I think this has a chance to be a very good prediction for me, but when I feel good about it, that's when weird stuff happens. So, Jake, wh where do you think the weird stuff is going to happen? What What do you think I potentially got wrong? I I just don't see how you can rank Okinaomi ahead of Miyogiryu. <laughs> <laughs> the dude got a Jun Yu show and beat two Ozeki. Oh my God! Yeah, I I don't care how much research you did. <laughs> no, I I got to stick with that one for uh for for the memes. Okay, that uh, works. that's got to be that pick. Yep. Because I, if if you did all that research and I got it correct just to spite you, that that that's everything that I could hope for in a podcast. I will point out in the outline after I I went on my five minute diatribe about Miyogiri versus Okinaomi, I did say that being said, Miyogiri is now going to be on the east side. Uh, so I I have that caveat built in where I I have an out, <laughs> which shows me how insecure you are about that pick. You're, Therefore, you're GD that's right, the, I am. Yep, that's the button of yours that I have to push right now. So yeah. that's what it, I'm doing. It's it's that, and then uh, the Bonske committee being dicks to Asanoyama that I kind of left myself and out with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that that is all we have. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on the episode, the Bonske will be released uh, November first for the Kyushu Basho that starts on November fourteenth. Uh, if you enjoy this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. Find us on Twitter, um, maybe Instagram, Facebook. We'll see if they can get their poop in a group. Uh, oh, yeah, I heard they were having issues. <laughs> yeah. No, they were down all day, and it was every single other social media was making fun of it, yeah. um, which is honestly the only reason I ever find out anything about Facebook. 
Um, but uh, our blog is grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com as well. You can find uh, Mac has done another couple excellent write-ups on uh, USA Sumo tournaments recently. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, you can send us an email at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 805-613-7866. That is 805-613-SUMO. I believe our next episode, uh, we usually wait a little bit longer to do career retrospectives, uh, but when the GOAT retires, you kind of you kind of jump in while the uh, fire – What's Strike while the strike while the while the sharpest tool in the <laughs> in the omelet. Strike while the iron is hot. Boom! There it is. Perfectly <laughs> timely. It wasn't awkward at all. Yep. It didn't turn into another Yogi Berra mess. There. Nope. <laughs> uh, so I think we're planning on recording that uh, sometime next weekend. Uh, yeah, kind of... within our October is going to be kind of weird. So Hakuho for sure, and then we got another couple potential ones. So there there will be some stuff coming out. We're just not exactly positive which and when. Yep. And I put out the call on Twitter for any comments that you might have about Hakuho or if you want to leave us any voicemails. We've already gotten a few voicemails on that front. But if you're actually listening to the tail end of this podcast, we would love to hear your voice and your comments about Hakuho, whether you loved him or whether you hated him. Uh, we're not we're not discriminating. The the retrospective about Hakuho is going to be very glowing from our perspective because we, we all loved Hakuho yeah. and didn't really care about his antics, but we know a lot of people did. So we're, we're not going to ignore that point of view. We're just going to say you're wrong. It's we're we're going to talk about all the things that were great about Hakuho and then play the credits. And then after that, we'll play a bunch <laughs> of voicemails from people who are critical. <laughs> but no, yeah, we, we want to hear your voice as well. So go yeah. ahead. Once again, that number was 805-613-7866, 805-613-SUMO. We will be talking at you soon. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.